Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So today we're gonna have a two-part video and we're gonna go over Mirror of Delirium and they're also gonna go over the 10 simulacrum runs that I did and uh, see if it's worth it. I think it is, but stick around for the end of the video so you can find out the profit that I made on that. Uh, first things first, the Mirror of Delirium. For some of the newer players out there, you know, you open up a map and you have this weird black portal thing and you walk through it and everything turns cloudy and then you start killing stuff and then it goes away and then some stuff drops on the ground. I'll explain how that works. Uh, so basically there's three ways technically to get a mirror of delirium. Uh, you can do this charged compass or if you go on PoE trade you just search right here. Area contains a mirror of delirium. You can do the three ones which are pretty cheap. You know 10 about 30 to 40 chaos. Now you can also get the more expensive ones that have 15 or 16 uses. Or, you know, two, three divine. The ten one's not going to sell. <laughs> uh, probably about two divine. And that'll guarantee a mirror of delirium on your map, and then you put it on your void stone if you've unlocked one, and that will guarantee it. Uh, the next way to do it is to just run a bunch of maps, and you know, eventually you'll probably get one. Uh, to increase those chances on your atlas tree here, if you block all of these on the left side, and all of these except for this one, then you'll have a significantly better chance of when you open a map and you'll have a mirror of delirium on there. Now what you want to do is get a map that's really long. So something like Strand where the portal's always going to be in the beginning when you spawn and then you have a long ways to go until the boss or until the end of the map. And the further away you get from the mirror, the stronger the monsters get, the more delirious you get, and the better the rewards are. So we'll show you how that works right now. So we'll get that in here put this void stone in here and we just have to run the map that's it I just took a strand map rolled it a couple times until I got beyond that doesn't really matter though you don't got to do anything crazy you can see right here sextant modifiers uh, maps contain a mirror delirium and as you're killing stuff these little simulacrum splinters will drop you pick them up you get 300 of them and you'll get a simulacrum all right, so we'll go into Strand here and run through the portal. You know, just kill as many monsters as you can, as fast as you can. That's, that's pretty much it. Pick up what you drop. Um, once you get to the end, then you can actually end it or just wait it out. Um, that's what this little button right here is for. You can accidentally click it and end, <laughs> end the mirror. Um, I've done that many times. Super annoying. Um, but the farther away you get from the portal, you know, the, the denser the monsters will be, the bigger the pack size. Um, when you add other sextants and scarabs that increase the pack size, then you know, more monsters will spawn, keep on running through the map. That's why Strand's nice, because the, the fog is what's called. That's why the map looks all foggy. Uh, we'll catch up with you eventually. And then, if it does, a little timer show up right here. And then the encounter will end. And then everything that's right here will just randomly drop something from that category of items. Let's see, there it is right there. So, when that happens, I try and get in there and kill the boss as fast as possible if you can. If not, not the biggest deal in the world. But anyway, there you go. Alright, so there's another way that you can guarantee uh, actual just delirium on your map. It's not uh, a mirror, so to speak, or the delirium orbs. So if you put, you know, each one adds 20% delirious. So if you add five of them, then you're 100%. And those ones are pretty tough. Um, I do have a video where I did 100% delirious Crimson Temple. Trying to find that apothecary card. Still haven't found one. Um, but yeah, so you add, you know, as many of these as you can take. 60% is usually fairly doable for most, um, like, mid-budget players, I guess you could say. Uh, to do 100% delirious, you're going to need you're gonna need some, some tanky gear. That also does a lot of damage as well. Uh, being chaos immune is super helpful. Uh, with my chaos on crit forbidden right, I chaos inoculation, so I don't take any chaos damage. I just have one life, but a lot of energy shield leech and so on. 
and then for the simulacrum. So it's basically the same concept. You just take this, put it in the map. Uh, it'll transport you to one of five different maps, technically, that are based on like the towns um, in the story. And you kill a bunch of monsters, and there's 30 waves that you can do. This is the only character I've ever played that I've been able to make it to wave 30. Because once, once you get to about wave 20 to 25, it starts to get really hard. And you need something that has massive amounts of defense, block, so spell block, attack block, um, life gain on hit or energy gain, energy shield gain on hit, and a significant amount of damage. Um, not in Delirium, and just a regular, regular map. I do about 20 to 30 million damage. And it still takes me uh, about a minute or so to do wave 30. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Um, also, obviously I have a mage blood and, you know, it's a pretty expensive character. You can do it with cheaper characters. Um, I'd say it's something that you'll probably have to build a character with that goal in mind. Um, it's just my personal opinion, you know. You could just build a character that's great at bossing, and you might be able to do wave 30. You know, anything's possible. But, yeah, I mean, I played Tornado Shot, and, you know, it's pretty, pretty high-end. Um, Toxic Rain. I used to play Summon Phant Phantasms. Arc, I did um, the Forbidden Right Totems, which I got close on that one. That was like a year or so ago before they completely nerfed it. Um... I think I made it to, yeah, like wave 27 or 28. That was the highest it ever been. This one, I, you know, I did 10 uh, wave 30s pretty much in a row. It took me about five hours or so. And with that, we'll get to um, the currency and what I made off of running 10 of these pretty much back to back. So here it is. That's a lot. Uh, it's a it's a great way to you know just make kind of just basic currency in the game. You don't have to get to wave thirty to make you know a decent amount of currency. Each one of these is running about uh, seventy chaos in standard, and let's see what they are in league right now. Yeah, same price, uh, seventy five or so, maybe eighty. So you know I spent. 700 chaos uh, to buy all 10 of them and I mean it's it's a significant amount of currency honestly um, I got 305 stacked decks uh, these are pretty expensive uh, 2120 snipers marks in league and there's one for sale right now at 1.9 divine I got uh, the megalomaniacs as far as I know these are the only, that's the only way that you can drop these is in simulacrum uh, this one seem to be fairly expensive there isn't one in league right now but in standard there's one for 25 divine I don't see anybody buying one for 300 divine but uh, basically what it is it's just four passive skills the uh, small passive skills don't give you anything but it's completely random what it gives you so you just kind of have to hope for a good combination this one has feed the fury which attack damage leeches life Increased damage while leeching, attack speed while leeching, and then calling strike too. So, it's a pretty good combo. Rotten Claws, Fear Device, 80% increased mana reservation, plus dex. I went through and price, check, price checked each one of these individually. Um, that one just kind of stood out to me. Increased critical damage, 2120. Yeah, it's two divine right there. So, you know, just a bunch of large and medium cluster jewels. Use them for crafting. Obviously, like, that one's a pretty easy one to craft, especially for my character or anyone that uses crit to do a lot of their damage. And then these ones are pretty expensive as well, relative for a small cluster jewel. I don't know what you get on them. So, in Klondor, they're pretty cheap, but everything's usually more expensive in standard, which, you know, people have been playing longer so they have more currency. Yeah, see, 50 chaos with that, without anything special rolled on it. One divine, because it has hatred, has mana reservation efficiency. Uh, but yeah, you can see here, you know, a bunch of essences, a bunch of frags. 
just a bunch of random, you know, basic currency. I got, I think, 108 Chaos Orbs, um, 5 Ancient Orbs, 4X, 4 Nolmet Orbs, pretty nice. Uh, 51 Orbs of Regret, a bunch of Fossils, Oils. Now, I upgraded the majority of the, the Essences to Shrieking from Screaming because they all drop Screaming. And I also upgraded some of the Oils, got rid of most of the Clear Oils because, I mean, they're pretty much worthless. Um, you know, I got couple breach stones just from the splinters got one uh, timeless emblem from the splinters as well a whole bunch of scarabs ton of catalysts and i got uh, some shaper maps elder maps and one full set of elder slayers which is pretty nice so we'll pull up old excellence next here and you can see that 4,800 chaos, and this is in Londra. This is standard pricing, so that works out to about 29 divine. It's actually probably significantly higher than this, um, just because of the megalomaniacs. If I go through and price check them, you know, there's probably a few of them in there that are worth, you know, five to ten divines. Just depends. Uh, if you go to standard, if you are playing in standard like I am, then the price goes up significantly. Um, they overvalue the megalomaniacs for some reason. This 53 divine, um, you know, and that's only 12, 13 divines if I were to sell all 15 of them. So, you know, it just depends on how much they how much they go for. But 53 divines in, in standard is is pretty nice. It, it's pretty realistic, you know. This is going for about two divines. Sniper's marks going for about three. Two stack decks, or 2C per stack deck, 305. And just, you know, trying to sell all the scarabs and stuff like that, which you can sell. And you just price them in bulk. Don't try to sell them one at a time. I mean, you can if you want to, but I've always found it uh, it's easier to sell larger quantities of stuff if you do, you know, 15 for 75 chaos or something like that as opposed to just trying to sell them for five chaos at a time. And it's easier because then you don't have to worry about people trying to just buy one, because people do. I do sometimes as well, but it's annoying when you're in a map and you know, you see a sale pop up and, and somebody wants one scarab. So, more often than not, I won't even accept the trade unless I'm sitting in my hideout crafting or something like that, then I'll do it. It took me about 30 minutes or so to do each simulacrum. Could be quicker for you, could take a little bit longer. It really just depends on, you know, on your character. Wave 30 is is, is pretty intense if you've never never got there. Uh, a clip here that I can show you from one of the wave 30s that I did. Uh, you're going to get Omniphobia and Kosis at the same time, every time. Probably the last five levels, you almost always get both of them at the same time. All right, so here's wave 30 in... Uh, one of my favorite ones, actually, I think it's the bridge encampment. Uh, it's super easy, especially for this build. You just kind of have to go up and down, you know, just going back and forth. Um, for probably like the first, I would say like 20 waves, um, you can pretty much just stand right in between these four pillars right here. And pretty much just kill everything. But yeah, so there's Omniphobia and Kosis. And, you know, they like to gang up on you. You know, with my build, it's fairly quick, I guess. You know, relatively speaking, um, to try and kill both of them while I'm also getting attacked by other stuff too. Uh, yeah, you know, I died pretty quick. I think this one took me about a little over a minute to do the final wave. Pick up some stragglers there, and there's always one hiding somewhere. There you go. It's one of the 10 wave 30s that I did. All right, well, thanks for watching. I will leave my POB that I'm using right now in the description below. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of the next video.